They say seeing is believing, but when it comes to photography, that can be bad advice. Programs like Photoshop mean any image can be manipulated, leaving us to wonder how much truth is left in photography. First of all, deception in photography is not a new invention. Photoshop is, Photoshop is just a tool for something that we've known and used for a long time. Humans like to be deceived, and clients have specific ideas. It's up to the photographers themselves to fulfill them or reject them. Maurice Weiss is a purist. His photos are a testament to our times. He documented Germany's path to reunification. He takes portraits of prominent politicians and depicted the fight against COVID-19. Ever since the advent of digital photography, he's been using Photoshop to brighten or emphasize certain parts of his images. But he doesn't cheat. I do what we call darkroom work. It makes a photo legible. But once you start to retouch a human face, so you can't see any spots, for example, if I started doing stuff like this, where do I stop? The boundaries are fluid. If we don't set strict boundaries, we open the gates to hell. Yet the temptation is strong. Photojournalists are under increasing pressure, and using Photoshop enables them to create images that the competition can only dream of. For many years, Peter Matthias Gede was editor-in-chief of Geo. The magazine made an effort to avoid printing manipulated photos. For a while, we had a person working at Geo, whom we all called the forensic scientist for photos. Essentially, his main job was to examine photos and to see whether they had been edited or tampered with. We had an instance where a photographer had always wanted to capture Machu Picchu devoid of humans. It's usually crowded with tourists, so he just edited all of them out. Had he not forgotten to also edit out the shadows projected from the tourists onto the walls, we might not have found out. And there was quite a lot of that kind of stuff, which left us both surprised and shocked. These kinds of photographers are known in the industry as pixel pushers. They take liberties with the truth, betraying the trust people place in photography. But perhaps this trust was misplaced all along. Right from the start, when photography began, there was always this desire, this need to tamper with images. Photoshop is basically just a further development of an age-old tool. Back then, it was done manually, with a brush. These brushes were often used to bend the truth, for propaganda purposes. Individuals who'd fallen out of favor would be removed, or heroic poses staged. Trotsky wasn't just murdered, he also disappeared from many photos. Mussolini, der, uh, Mussolini wanted to be shown riding a horse, but without people seeing the person holding its halter, to make him look more heroic. Or there's Hitler, who no longer wanted Goebbels depicted with women other than his wife. There's Mao Zedong, who didn't think it seemly to be so closely flanked by others during a parade. So, the two men were moved five meters back. And today, the drama is being amped up. More rockets, more smoke. A pool of blood replaces a puddle of water. A Rolex judged too flashy magically disappears and sweat stains dry miraculously. One of the most iconic photos of our times, here too, manipulation. You get bloggers who sit down and scrutinize the images, researching every last detail, comparing the photos as they appear in different publications. They spotted, for example, that the white in the corner of one eye had been removed from an image. And then, thanks to further research, went on to reveal that this famous photographer had even removed entire persons from other, not quite as well-known photos. Star photographer Steve McCurry's reputation took a hit. 
The discovery caused an uproar. Had he trampled all over the ethics of photojournalism? But where does the truth end and the fake begin? It's a question the jury of the World Press Photo Award faces time and time again, like with this photo from Gaza City. Did the photographer tamper with the lighting afterwards? In such a way that strangely it's lit from both sides? In order to illuminate these mourning people in the narrow alley? To give them an almost religious glow? I think experts could probably spend an entire day debating this, whether or not that is crossing a line. Peter Bialobreski has not just been part of the jury of the World Press Photo Award, He's also won it twice himself. Well, you have to submit the raw data, the original photograph, upon request. That way, they can examine how, and to what extent, the data has been interpreted. And then you always get debates about how far photographers are allowed to go with their interpretations. But even a black and white image is an abstraction and is a big change in comparison with the supposedly real situation. Bialobreski is convinced that every digital image is an interpretation conducted via algorithms. So why wouldn't photographers take things into their own hands? He considers preaching purism to be naive. I believe that throughout its history, Photography has always developed in tandem with what becomes technically possible, and that it's impossible to limit these processes. Bialobreski likes playing around with technology, freeing himself of this eternal commitment to authenticity. He takes the skies from one photo, the buildings from another. With just one click, two photos become one. I don't think that it's being manipulative in any way. God never claimed that a documentary photograph must only contain exposure to light from one side. For Bialobreski, manipulation starts with the intention to deceive. In his photos, however, he depicts the world the way he perceives it. He intensifies or condenses images, and occasionally a person might wander from one image to another. I could spend two hours waiting for the right moment, when the composition is just the way I want it to be. Or I can use the tools at my disposal and create the composition in my mind. I still haven't added anything from another situation to the image, but I've taken the synchronicity of shooting the photo and creating the right composition out of the equation. And I do this only to be able to participate in the debate, to say, we have other possibilities now, and that's not a bad thing. What do you think? Is editing photos forgery? Let us know in the comments and hit the subscribe button for more Arts Unveiled.